The mysteries of the experiences that this universe has to offer are as vast as they are infinite. This is Skull Babylon, and on this episode of Paradigm Shift Radio, we welcomed on special guests Taylor Marie and Nick Gabriel to talk about their experiences with ayahuasca, the shamanic brew to assist and provide an experience to flex our perceptions of reality, both inside and out. Both Taylor and Nick have worked with ayahuasca numerous times, and together we approach a conversation with the purpose of collective education as we continue to explore and understand. Join Facebook.com slash Paradigm Shift Radio for future and past episodes. Keep your mind open, keep spiraling, and enjoy the show. What do you know? What have you experienced? There's a lot to this reality, and uh, a lot of us like to think that we're very familiar with what it has to offer. But what if we were told there was more? What if, we to- what if we were told that there were continents of the mind that many of us have yet to explore, or at least have yet to remember? That's relating to the topic that we will be covering here tonight on the show of Paradigm Shift Radio. We're going to be talking about the ever-popular, mysterious, shamanic br- brew of ayahuasca even just the word itself often sort of rings bells with people try saying it to yourself ayahuasca nice (laughs) all right guys so i'm your host skull babylon and you're listening to another episode of paradigm shift radio on behalf of paradigmshiftcentral.com and guys just confirm for me off the beginning of the show that things are sounding okay for everybody who's in the live chat as per usual, if we can just get the show out there to those who may be up and about at this time live on the internet and invite them to join us in the live chat and uh, also to be able to share the show themselves and to get involved with the conversation. We will be looking for other people to call into the show tonight who have had their own experiences with ayahuasca. And <laughs> hold on, like I'm literally just talking to my guests tonight and excuse me one second as I just send them a couple messages. <laughs> So our guests tonight on the show are going to be Taylor Marie and Nick Gabriel. Both of these people have had their own experiences with ayahuasca, and uh, some of you may know them. So Taylor, who is actually a good friend of mine, we we started talking across the internet a while back. It was uh, must have probably been a little bit under a year, not too not too long ago, and and she was uh, in Toronto at the time, and uh, we did meet up uh, back in the back in the day around like June, and and that was actually relating to ayahuasca. Uh, in, in itself and uh, that was like a journalism video I did about another man named TJ Daw and uh, I mean that's a story in itself maybe we'll have him on the show at some point and he was talking about ayahuasca so anyways I went down to Toronto did like a journalism report on ayahuasca and uh, got to hang out with Taylor then and she's been putting up all these videos on the internet about her experiences with ayahuasca the interesting story with Taylor is that she was pursuing an acting career an acting and modeling career uh, not too long ago and, and then she heard about ayahuasca and it just something something told her that she needed to experience this so then she was up and about and off to Peru and experiencing it for herself and uh, since then she's been making videos on YouTube that have gone fairly viral sharing her experience and uh, just her explaining like how this plant has interacted with her life how it's changed her perception how it has shifted her paradigm and uh, so Taylor will be joining us she'll be talking about her recent adventures that she was out and about on and she was out in Peru as well again plus a few other areas so she'll tell us about that and uh, yeah she has worked with Iowa and I'll get her to reiterate this later in the show. She'd worked with ayahuasca like well over 30 times from what I understand. So she's definitely, definitely been able to interact with the the plant, so to speak, on numerous occasions. And uh, yeah, so I'll be exciting to have Taylor, a fellow psychonaut. And uh, the other psychonaut who's on the show with us tonight is going to be Nick Gabriel, who many of you may be already familiar with. Nick is formerly a host of London Real, which is a podcast in itself and, and, and very similar to Paradigm Shift. It is about creating conversation. It is about listening to what other people have experienced in this reality and get them to sort of share their story and, and to sort of create that psychological foam pit where we can feel, com- feel comfortable being able to talk about the ideas that we don't usually get to talk about in normal public spheres of conversation, which is exactly what Paradigm Shift Radio is about. 
and I'll explain a little bit about that more in a minute. And uh, we will be bringing them on. I know Taylor's just trying to work out some technical difficulties. She's just uh, reinstalling Skype by the sounds of it. And Nick is actually lined up in the queue. So, Nick, make sure that we got headphones, but I'm pretty sure we'll be good to go once we're ready to rock and roll. And, uh, again, ParadigmShiftCentral.com is a hub for a global collective of Paradigm Shift communities. And this radio show is something that we do every Saturday. We've been doing it for the last 42 Saturdays now, and uh, it's a community interactive show, so like I mentioned, we want to be able to hear from more than just Taylor and Nick on the show tonight. We want to be able to hear from anybody else out there who has something to share related to ayahuasca, whether it be their own experiences or their own perspectives or whatever. So just going back to Nick, and then I'm just going to mention a couple things at the top of the show in terms of Paradigm Shift Community News. And obviously check out ParadigmShiftCentral.com if you have not yet. That is where you'll find all the links to the global paradigm shift communities that encourage open-mindedness and a whole bunch of other stuff we've got going on there. So Nick, he's, I mean, there's really not too much I need to say. I'll, I'll let him do the talking once once we bring him on. The the interesting thing in part about Nick that, that I personally res- resonate with is his relationship with uh, the martial arts side of things. I mean, obviously I'm very interested in martial arts my, myself. And uh, Nick's actually involved in a jiu-jitsu brotherhood, to say the least. And the website for that we'll post into the live chat, but it is jujitsubrotherhood.com. So we'll be talking about how Nick's experiences and and working with ayahuasca has sort of like helped give him direction in, in his life and, and how this runs parallel to his work within the jujitsu community as well. So we'll be talking with Nick and getting to know him and talking with Taylor. And Taylor and Nick have not actually talked together yet. So I, I figured, you know. This is a really, really ample opportunity for an awesome show here tonight. So, again, guys, if you can, please remind your friends to tune into it live tonight. But the episodes will be up again. You can listen to it through the blog link. I'm sure you're listening to it through right now if you're listening to it live. And you'll be able to listen to that again. But the episodes do go up onto YouTube. YouTube after they air here, and we encourage you to check out the YouTube episode and share that as well, and also to be able to share the episodes further on YouTube once they've already gone up there. And uh, hold on, let me just do a little couple things on Facebook at the same time, but in the meantime, guys, just to sort of get things rolling and just to sort of give an idea of perspective on the Paradigm Shift global community and where people are calling in from, I remind you guys in the chat to be at any point post your Facebook pages, post your profiles, and encourage people to connect with you. If you're posting your profile into the live chat, into the show tonight, and to log into the live chat, all you need is a Facebook account. And it's pretty straightforward to log in. Blog Talk's pretty good that way. So for anybody who's in the live chat, just go ahead, post your profile link, and when you do that, I'm basically you're, you're basically just saying that that's an invitation for anybody to add you. And uh, that's the way Facebook works. We just sort of put out our branches, and we encourage them to develop stronger neural pathways. So those, those relationships that we have with each other are, are one of the ways that we do that. So do that. And uh, also, yeah, just in a, in a or I don't want to get too many things in the chat room at once, but I was going to say to sort of just state your location and where you're from. So, um, but yeah, things are looking okay. I'm pretty sure Taylor's just sorting her things out. Nick looks like he's ready to rock. So, right on, guys. Okay, so just in terms of quick community news, I just wanted to be able to mention that the Journey to Lucidity Project, which many of you have already been keeping a track of, uh, is the new full-length movie that... I'm working on. Uh, I myself, Skull Babylon, youtube.com slash Skull Babylon. Please check out and subscribe to my channel there. That's where you'll find all the latest stuff that I put up. And I've been making videos uh, because I went to school for TV broadcasting and that's what I do. I put together media, which is an extension, and, uh, which is the, the reason why we're doing this here tonight. I mean, media in terms of film, media in terms of radio, media in terms of using the technologies that we have to be able to help create these spaces for ourselves and tell our story. So, uh, Journey to Lucidity is a full-length movie, and you can go to facebook.com slash journey to lucidity, and I'll post a link for that into the live chat as well. And I would kindly just ask you guys to keep an eye on that because it's getting pretty exciting. I'm going to be traveling to California this Tuesday, and uh, I'm going to be posting up sort of behind-the-scenes video logs, and uh, that film is going to be very cool. The story behind it is going to be partly scripted as well as partly in the moment of happening at the festival. The Lucidity Festival is where I'm attending, so it's a three-day transformational festival. There's going to be a lot of wonderful people there, like music, musicians, arts, like philosophy, teaching, just learning about so much stuff, and that's going to be interwoven with this plot that that I have incorporated throughout it, and uh, keep an eye open for the upcoming 
boring status updates about that. And of course, please feel free to donate at GoFundMe.com slash Dream to Lucy. The funding for that will be up indefinitely. And I look forward to sharing more with, of this with you guys. I, I was working more on the script today and like I'm excited about it. If, if for those of you who are involved in like creative manifestation, so to speak, it's really exciting when you're just sort of in the moment and just like, all right, you know, just like let it flow. Like I'm, I'm writing it down on paper, like, and, and then just seeing what comes out of you, but then just feeling it click and feeling be like, yes, okay, like this way, that way, you know, and you sort of check it and you feel like which way feels better. And as I'm doing that, like I'm, I'm figuring out the story for, for, for the film and, and a lot of these ideas are, are things that I'm sort of like taking from different aspects and just combining them and, and even things just, uh, and, you know, my friends might say certain things and I'm like, yes, that's something that I want to be able to incorporate to the film. So, I mean, this film, I'm fulfilling my role as a storyteller. That, that's that's one of the things that, that I do here. That's part of my purpose is to be able to create a story. So the Journey to Lucidity is one story that I'm very excited to share with you guys. So again, Facebook.com slash Journey to Lucidity. GoFundMe.com slash Journey to Lucidity. Check out the trailer that's already up. Check out any of the other stuff. And please contribute if you can financially or even just checking it out in itself is still helping bring it into this reality and uh, just share it with your friends further. And that is greatly appreciated. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much the gist of what I want to mention in community news. I, I don't want to keep things held up too long. Uh, just a quick story it just uh, to sort of uh, go outside the topic of, of ayahuasca, but just something to bring up. A lot of you know, um, just in terms of like what's happening in the life of Skull Babylon, you know, uh, as many know, a while ago, I started a new job and, and that new job was working as a promotions person for a local radio station. And part of that job was to dress up in a green superhero costume and go around town with a mask on, giving people thumbs up and holding a giant sign that had the radio logo on it that says free, because the radio station is called Free FM. So 98.1 Free FM, well, London's world-class rock. And uh, no, I'm not actually on the station. I, I just got to dress up in a suit. But uh, today was my last day doing that for, for, the, for the time being. And, and it was just really neat because the experience that I had within that, it, it, I was standing, like literally, this is what I was doing for a while. I was standing at street corners, among other things, and just being able to interact with people when they drive by you in a car, because the people see you from a distance, and, and they just like, it, they smile, right? It, it gets past that sort of like bubble that they might have around themselves, and they and you just see them legitimately smile, and to be able to make like, literally, like, if I stand at a street corner for like 30 minutes, I can't even count how many people I make smile, but it's really awesome, because within that moment, you're looking at that other person because that's the main part of what I focus on I focus on eye contact and if you see a person from like just like 100 meters away and you make eye contact with them at that moment that is like the most important moment in their reality at that time and it just basically confirms for them that they're existing it confirms for them that they're alive and they're just oh this is awesome that guy like cares about my existence and then they smile back and then they give a thumb up and you just share this really genuine moment even just for like three seconds as they're passing by you and even today like it just sort of like uh, the microcosm and the macrocosm like a, a young girl came up to me today and, and she was with her mom and she she was like hey can I give you a hug and I'm like yeah yeah and she's like you made my day like this really made my day you know and then what I say to people and this is kind of the main thing that I, that I want to get at here people especially the, the younger kids they'll ask me they'll be like they'll be like you know first of all they'll be like hey you know like batman superman i'm like no 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 kids my name's freebie fred but yes i am good friends with them i'll tell them you said hi and then they'll ask me they'll be like freebie fred what's your superpower and and this is my response and this is something that's really close to my heart and uh i need to mention that the, the suit itself is green so i mean green is a very appealing neutral color that people can relate to and Heart Shocker as well, obviously, in some ways. And they'll ask me, they'll say, Freebie Fred, what's your superpower? And I'll say, I have the power of positivity, which is the same power I have. So by using our utility belts of smiles, thumbs up, and compliments, we can change the world together. And, you know, and the kids will be like, whoa, you know, and then I'm just like, that's right you too can be a superhero. And they're just like, oh my God, you know? Because to these kids at that time, like think about when you're young and you're just like, oh my God, Santa, right? To them, it's like, oh my God, an actual superhero. And for them to like get that little bit of a moment and advice and uh, mentoring from them, it, it, it can stay with them. And it's those little things that make the big difference in the world. And that was actually one of the things I would say to people too. So yeah, I just wanted to sort of share that moment with you because uh, it, it, it was that chapter kind of coming to an end. And uh, the next big part, uh, I mean, I'll probably be doing again in the summer there's a good chance but the next big part that, of my life that i got coming up is the lucidity festival so 
and uh, I'm really excited to tell you uh, how that is as well. So let me just double check with Taylor and uh, Nick. We're gonna bring you onto the air shortly, and uh, let me just see. <laughs> so okay, before we just get like one more minute here, just uh, again for everybody in the live chat at this point. Now that we have more people in the live chat than we did a few minutes ago, and uh, please again continue to share the show. Uh, <laughs> Where are we from? Where are we listening? Where are you guys? Where are you guys listening in from? I'm, I'm curious as to how many people are listening in from the UK at this point because I know it is about 4 a.m. in the morning there. So Nick woke up early to join us here. So we got people calling in from Columbus, Ohio. We got people from Newfoundland, Canada, Dresden, Ontario. We got someone from Earth. Oh, wow. And we got someone from North Carolina, Riverton, Wyoming, Philadelphia. Someone is calling in for, or listening in from the United Kingdom. Actually, that's our good buddy, Aaron. We might be hearing from him later in the show as well. Just to give you a heads up on that, Aaron. And also, we got people from Pittsburgh, people from uh, Paoli, and people from the Milky Whistle. Uh, <laughs> so we got people from all over this multiverse listening into the show. <laughs> so Taylor, uh, still trying to hope you can figure things out. I think she's uh, struggling a little bit, but um, so we'll figure it out though. Taylor, just keep trying. I mean, you reinstalled Skype. Yes, I, I'm not sure if she's listening to the show right at this second, but I'll talk to her and we'll get that sorted out. So in the meantime, we're going to bring on Nick. So again, Nick's website that you can check out is Jiu-Jitsu Brotherhood. And uh, also just like on the side note, like there are videos of him talking about his experience that I'm just going back and talking and listening to as well from, from the times when he was uh, interviewed through the London Real podcast. But this is an extension of the conversation that began with the one breath. So we're going to be talking about ayahuasca, shifting consciousness, what it means, why is it illegal in some part, in parts of the world, and uh, just what we can learn from it. So Nick Gabriel, if you're ready, we are going to bring you here onto the show on Paradigm Shift Radio. Here we go. Hello, Nick. Hey, buddy, can you hear me? Yes, yes, we can hear you. And uh, yeah. you, you have headphones on? I do. Cool, man. Okay, well, here we go. So this is sounding good enough as it is, and uh, thank you so much for, for joining us here on the show tonight, man. Like, this this actually, this is a conversation I'm I'm really looking forward to, and, and I think you were expressing the similar feelings as well. Yeah, but it's going to be fun. Totally, totally. All right, so Nick, just as uh, we just sort of see if Taylor's going to join us here in a minute, whether it'll happen when it happens. But in the meantime, just uh, introduce a bit more about yourself. I mean, before we actually get too, too deep into the topic of ayahuasca, who who is Nick Gabriel for the, for the people who have never met him before? So Nick Gabriel is actually an, an alter, a pseudonym that I use for anything I do that's not really related to my jiu-jitsu career. Um, my, my real name is Nicholas Gregoriadis. And I used or created the Nick Gabriel pseudonym to use with my involvement in the online talk show London Real that I co-founded with Ryan Rose just over a year ago. And also I'll be using that name for any books that I publish that are not related to my jiu-jitsu career. And yeah, I just... Uh, I guess I'll be, the, the book will be uh, that I'm going to be publishing will be all about the human experience and what we're doing here and what I think our purpose is. And mm -hmm. uh, that's that's pretty much what the Nick Gabriel project's about. It's just about exploring the human experience and teaching others what I've what I've learned and what I've found. Cool, man. Cool. Yeah, I think I think that's what we're here to do, right, is to be able to take in our experiences, like experience reality from our unique perspective and, and then be able to, to share it to, to sort of be able to, like, add it to that documentation of experiences on the table. So, um <laughs> Yeah, okay. I'm just uh, I'm I'm we had ta Taylor you you were logged in for a second there and uh try again. I think she's almost got it figured out. But uh so before we bring Taylor on, let's just sort of begin to introduce the topic of ayahuasca. And uh Nick, I know it's uh, bright and early for you there. Are you are, are you awake? Are you awake really yet? I mean, I'm sure we'll sort of, <laughs> the energy will rise as we sort of get into the show a little bit, I imagine. <laughs> I've definitely been more awake. <laughs> that, okay. <laughs> that's, that's honest. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, maybe. Um, I mean, I, I got some. 
Yeah, I got some water next to me. So, I mean, even anybody who's just listening to this, be sure to stay hydrated, folks. So that's an important part of the learning process. So, uh, okay, hold on. Um, Taylor, just call in again. You you, uh, you you were there. Okay, so here she is again. Okay, so I'm going to bring Taylor on before she drops off the line again, and then we're going to keep it along, and we'll introduce her, and then we'll get right into the topic of what is ayahuasca, for those of you who may not be entirely familiar. So, Taylor, we're going to bring you on to Paradigm Shift Radio. Here we go. Hello, hello, Taylor. Hello. There we go. Okay. Oh my God! Finally. <laughs> Ta-da! Thank you. Good job. <laughs> Got sort of. Okay. So, and Taylor, you have headphones in as well, right? Just yeah, double checking. Cool. All right. Sounds pretty crystal clear. So, right on. Thank you, Taylor, for joining us here tonight. I know uh, you've been. Uh, <laughs> you, you just did another interview not too long ago, so it's good to be able to get more experience, being able to talk about the stuff that you've been go- had going on in your life. And uh, who knows, we might be able to listen to you again on the Joe Rogan podcast someday. I know that's a pretty big ambition of yours, is it not? It's going to happen. I am making it happen. <laughs> For sure. I'm right up there with you on that one. And, uh, you know, for, for for anybody listening, maybe let's sort of put forth a collective intent, like as a, a collective listening audience. If you enjoy the show and, and, and you enjoy what Taylor's talking about, and even if you enjoy what I'm talking about and you want to be able to hear us have a conversation, sorry, a conversation with Joe Rogan someday, then let's just put forth that seed and, and plant that. Because, yeah, I mean, that's <laughs> that that was uh, Joe Rogan. I mean, he was um, going back in the day if we just sort of like back step a little bit, like, was he not one of the first people? I mean, not necessarily just through his podcast, but like when you first found out about ayahuasca, uh, how did you first find out about it? You're talking to me, yeah? Yeah, sorry, to Taylor, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, it was through, um, well, it wasn't through Joe himself, but it was on his podcast. Uh, he was interviewing that guy, um, what's his name? Uh, Aubrey Murphy. Sorry, Murray. I was just Nick. Hey, Nick. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, sorry. Um, typing on your laptop, because I can tell you got like an internal mic or something. Uh-huh. Uh, typing on your laptop will come through the mic really loud. So oh, if okay, you cool. type like uh, type, like ninja style, just like this. Sure, sure, but yeah, I won't type. <laughs> All right, okay, thanks. Uh, okay, sorry, uh, Taylor, just uh, you can continue what you were saying there. Just... Um, yeah, so I heard about Ayahuasca first on the Joe Rogan podcast, um, but it was through um, Aubrey Marcus, uh, who he was interviewing at the time. Cool, cool. All right, so, uh, okay, Taylor, do you want to just introduce yourself? I mean, I think it's good to just sort of go be able to go around the circle once before we actually kick things off here. So, Taylor, in your own words, uh, just introduce yourself. Who is Taylor Marie? Well, <laughs> I'm a girl. Um, I'm from Canada, and I just, I don't know, I, I happened to stumble across ayahuasca. Um, it really hit home. You know, I resonated a lot with it and um, decided that I needed to go to the Amazon to try it for myself, uh, so I did. Um, at this time, I was um, working as an actress in Toronto, trying to, you know, get my way onto television and films eventually. Um, but, you know, the ayahuasca kind of took hold of me, and I decided that I needed to follow this path instead. And so ever since, I've just been, you know, following what my heart tells me to do, and that it has worked out really good for me so far. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's good. I I know you're you're pretty fond of being able to follow your intuition, and uh, yeah, it's led you to some interesting places. And I'm sure we'll be able to talk about your recent adventures that you just got back from. You you were gone, or you when did you leave? Like October, give or take. I left mid October. Yeah. Yeah. So you were gone for what, like four or five months, then I guess, eh? Uh, almost six. Almost six. Wow. So that's quite an adventure. So we'll, we'll be able to hear about Taylor's ayahuasca retreats that she was taking people on. She was leading after she experienced it numerous times and just recently went back. So, guys, let's just sort of, in terms of ayahuasca, because maybe, I mean, uh, for a lot of us, we're, we're kind of familiar with the topic, but maybe it wasn't properly introduced at this point. Like, I think it's just really interesting to emphasize the fact that, yes, like, ayahuasca is an experience, and and when you take this experience into yourself, it opens you up to experiences of this reality that mainstream society, like, it doesn't even have a context for. Like, it doesn't even have words for. There's, there's things that are, like, ineffable. They are beyond description. And, you know, the, these these are experiences of just, like, the way you literally see things. Like, when you're in ayahuasca, a lot of it can be very internal with your eyes closed, and a lot, and some of it can be, like, with your eyes open. And you're literally seeing things differently. So this can include, like, seeing spirits. We get people talking about seeing spirits, quote-unquote. Like, seeing, like, the spirits of, like, the, like, 
forest spirits like Katamo, uh, which is <laughs> something we'll be talking about. If, any, if anybody, if anybody has seen the movie Princess Mononoke, it's a very popular <laughs> anime. There are those little tree spirits that that you see that sort of walk around and they tilt their head a little bit. Those uh, the, the, they are referred to as Katamo, and, and they are actually I, from some Asian sort of like you know they're they're an awareness, they're a knowledge. But uh, Taylor, we'll talk about that later in the show. <laughs> but, but you actually had an encounter with with those uh, adorable little guys. I remember. Yes, I did. Yeah, yeah. So so again, so ayahuasca opens you up to experiencing. You're, you're literally communicating with intelligent entities that exist beyond the third dimensional reality, so to speak, if you want to refer to it that way, that so many of us are commonly familiar with. And and it literally helps us sort of like open up our antenna to more of the information, both externally and internally. And it helps you sort of travel throughout your own mind and experiences the darkest parts of yourself as as well as like parts that are going to help you heal. Like it is a healing plant. So, so that is what ayahuasca, that is just a bit of what ayahuasca is. So, I mean, that's only just scratching the surface though now nick in in your words just to be able to educate for the people out there like i always think you know every lesson is relative to the student so presume excuse me presuming that there are people listening to the show who are just learning about ayahuasca the first time what is it that we need to teach them about it the first thing that comes to my mind is don't be afraid and the second thing that comes to my mind is it's not a drug because I cannot tell you how many times I've had to educate people. When I start to tell them about my experiences, the the first thing that comes up is, oh, I could never do that because it sounds really scary, or I, I don't want to do that because I don't do drugs. And the the first part, the the fear, I mean, perhaps perhaps what I said is incorrect. You you sh- you, sh- you probably should be afraid, but you should conquer that fear and and know that. As scary as the places ayahuasca takes you to are, it's it's for the further the development of your soul and it's for your own betterment. And regarding the the drug issue, I think the war against drugs campaign that's been waged on our consciousness, as Graham Hancock puts it, is so pervasive and so powerful that many people just cannot accept that a plant that you take that changes your consciousness is not a, ju- a drug. They instantly label that as being a drug. And that's a very sad thing because, as Taylor, I'm sure, will agree, that is the furthest thing from taking heroin or <laughs> uh, taking speed. It is the furthest thing you could possibly do from something like that. It's it's a medicine, not a drug. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, I can definitely agree with that. <laughs> Yeah, spiritual medicine was a term that I, I sort of came across a, a while back, and I'm just like, yeah, I think, you know, if we were to try to sort of change our perspective on something like ayahuasca, we need to change the words and the context that, that we're using to explain it. So, I mean, yeah, like drug is kind of, uh, you know, a lot of people have connotations associated with that. But, I mean, like spiritual medicine, spiritual process it is an mm-hmm. activation of something. I mean, I think, yeah, it's just helping understand a little bit more of, of what this is. So, so Taylor, in in your own words, just sort of adding on what Nick was talking about there, tell us more about ayahuasca. Educate us. Teach us. Okay. Well, um, you know, I guess first it, it, it's a really helpful teacher. Um, you know, it really brings – well, in my experiences anyway, I can't speak for everybody because everybody's experiences are very different. Mm-hmm. Um, Actually, sorry, Taylor, I was just going to say, I think uh, I, I, we did jump ahead of ourselves a little bit, so – and you can explain this as well. I know you know more about it than, than I do. But, yeah, let's just explain the fact that I, well, ayahuasca like is itself like a, a combination of vines that shamans prepare into a brew, into a tea that is, like, drank, and then that's how it is experienced. So, I mean, I just want to, for again, for those people who may not, who literally may not be entirely familiar, like, that, that is what it is. But, sorry, Taylor, continue with what you were saying. Um, right. So, yeah, for, for me, um, it was a very helpful teacher in – you know, learning about myself and bringing up parts of myself that I had um, kind of walked away and, and ignored um, or, you know, knew were there but didn't want to face, um, you, you know, like certain problems that I had growing up or um, just parts of who I am that I just I didn't feel comfortable with because of what society says and, you know, whatever, fear of judgment and... Um, so yeah, that that was a big thing that um, 
for me, ayahuasca is good for, um, and I'm sure for many other people as well. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it's just it's just such a, an amazing teacher and guide. You know, there's that expression, um, for those who understand, no explanation is necessary, and for those who don't know it, no explanation is possible. And <laughs> I watched a little bit of one of Taylor's videos um, earlier um, this morning, and it starts with her just with her ha- her head in her hands, and she's just she's at a loss for words. She's struggling to find the words to explain it, and I resonated with that because there's been so many times that I've tried to tell people what it's like, and there's just no reference point. It's yeah. like pe- some people will say, "Oh, is it like taking acid?" or "Is it like going to a hypnotherapist?" or and you just you cannot understand fully what it is until you do it. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Yeah. So, and just a, a reminder, guys. I mean, let's. Uh, for those of you listening to Paradigm Shift Radio, I mean, yes, I, I wouldn't refer to this as an interview. This is us just having a conversation. So at this point forward, yeah, Taylor, if you sort of like want to just jump in and, and allow you guys to bounce ideas off of each other and have a conversation with with each other here tonight, so yeah, sure. um, we'll just sort of you know casually that way, just in a circle and and and, and talk and, and share our experiences of what this is. And, mm-hmm. and 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 I think one of the things that a lot of people are sort of interested in, and, and this is almost dovetailing off our, our previous episode of Paradigm Shift Radio when we got into the discussion of the pineal gland and, uh, you know, just the idea of, like, what DMT is and the fact that DMT is a part of the ayahuasca experience. It is it is the, the chemical that is found in parts of the plants, but then it's also the idea that it's a chemical that's released in our brain. And, and I'll just say off the top, because I know a lot of people who get excited about this topic sort of jump into uh, this statement as if it is fact, and, and, they, and they talk about, like, how DMT is produced, is produced by the pineal gland that's still technically uh, just conjecture. We're not totally for sure about that, just for the record, for those of you who sort of just be careful how you explain it. But but there definitely is something that changes in the way we perceive things when the DMT is released in the brain, whether it be directly through the pineal gland, which I, I think, I mean, of all places, if it's going to be somewhere, I mean, there's something happening with the pineal gland. Don't get me wrong. It's <laughs> literally like opening up a stargate to more of these experiences. So, I mean... I don't even, I don't even think it's important. Like, well, that's what I was kind of getting at, yeah. yeah. Go ahead, Nick, though. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, who, who cares what it's doing? It's doing something, and... It, 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 the the results speak for themselves. There's so many things in this world that require subjective experience, like diet is one of them. There's so many people claiming to know what the best foods to eat are, but the only way you can really tell what the best foods to eat are are by subjectively experiencing them and seeing how they affect your body and how they affect your health. And if you have questions about ayahuasca, just go do it. <laughs> uh, don't, don't research which chemical compounds it has and what it's going to do to your heart rate and you know like don't try and control the experience and figure out everything that's going to happen to you because I can guarantee you no matter what you think ayahuasca is you just have no idea until you've taken it <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, go ahead Taylor yeah. I was just going to say um, just adding on to that generally um I mean, I know a lot of people say, oh, yeah, you should research things before you try them. But the way I like to go into these new experiences is, you know, not really knowing too much about it so that I don't hold any sort of expectations and I can go into it open. And, and I mean, obviously, you know, I, I try to find out about the different health risks and if there is any risks at all to me. But um, generally, I like just going in not knowing too much mm-hmm. about it. Yeah, people are so terrified about ayahuasca being a drug and it being being dangerous or able to physically harm you, but they'll go and neck like tequila shots at the bar yeah. every, every weekend, which is a guaranteed poison that's definitely yeah. going to mess with you. It's just that yeah. the world is so messed up right now, and for people to even cons- like the fact that we just have to address that topic and that we have to tell, we have to try to convince people that ayahuasca is, is not this evil drug that's going to make you jump off a building just is, is proof of how messed up society is in my opinion right but we don't even have to convince anybody i mean you know we can just you know do this for ourselves and be open about it and then you know people will see that and whether or not people want to believe you or not i mean that's not our problem there will be people that you know 
look at us and say, wow, you know, there is a difference in this person. Since they've been, you know, working with this thing, maybe I'll go try it for myself. Mm-hmm. I kind of I kind of agree, but I also, I also disagree because, for example, my mom and dad are two people who uh, ayahuasca would help them more than... Uh, there are two prime candidates for the, the healing that ayahuasca offers, mm-hmm. and the reason, <laughs> the, reason they would, <laughs> the reason they wouldn't do it is because of the whole the drug issue, or it's because yeah. they've, they've come from an era in which things like that are looked at as, as being illegal, and mm-hmm. and that wouldn't be an issue if they hadn't been brainwashed in that way. You know, they would yeah. probably have taken ayahuasca by now, and they probably would have received that healing. So in my life, I've noticed that it is a big thing that I have to overcome. Yeah, I, it, it's interesting too because I mean ayahuasca itself, in terms of like uh, law and you know when it's legal and when it's not, you, you can actually online people can do this. You, you can order the ayahuasca, like the the leaves of the plants, and, and and be able to get the ingredients of it. And it's not actually illegal until it's in the form of the brew itself. I I, I think. And correct me if I'm wrong. Maybe Taylor, do you know a bit more about that itself? In terms of like, at what point is ayahuasca illegal? Yeah, it, it becomes illegal once the uh, the two, you know, the combination of the plants are are mixed. Are you because, serious? Is that yeah. Amazing? Yeah, yeah. So it's very picky, right? They're just like it's like all oh, these plants are fine, these plants are fine, but as soon as you combine them, like. But yeah. I mean, yeah. Again, you know, and then that's the point where a lot of us, our parents, are just like because of, exactly what Nick was saying. Because of that, like unless unless uh, the you know the the prime minister walks up to my door and tells me that it's okay and legal for my son to do this, I'm not going to let it happen, right? But as soon as it is, then sure, what the heck not, right? So yeah. But I want to so, I want to uh, go back to the the point um, about like trying to you know needing to convince people that this you know isn't really a drug and it's and it's safe. Um, you know, I tried so hard, you know, I've been working with this stuff for over a year and I've been trying so hard to convince my parents that, you know, ayahuasca isn't a drug. It's perfectly safe. Like it's doing so many amazing things, but you know, as much as I try, they just keep resisting it. And I've just, you know, a while ago I decided that I was just going to stop trying so hard to convince them and just let them see Mm -hmm. through me. And, and actually the other day, my mom, um, you know, she, she, I've been hanging out with her quite a bit, and she's noticed the change in me. And she actually came up to me and said, "You know what, Taylor? I think I might need to do ayahuasca with you." Wow! <laughs> wow! Yeah. That's yeah. Really so, cool. as, you know, I tried so hard to convince them with my words, but really, it was just them who needed to see the change in me. Yeah, lead by the way you live, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I pay. I pay for my dad to go out to the jungle in a heartbeat if he said. I'd do it. Like I'd, I'd send yeah. him a ticket tomorrow. You know, yeah. but but I just know he won't do that because, I mean, he's sixty-one years old and I mean he's never had a joint in his life. You know, yeah. um, so it'll it'll be oh, tough. Yeah. That's cool that your mom said that. Tell him. Yeah, like I think uh, it, you know, with with the ayahuasca, yeah, there's there's a lot of stories of uh, a wide variety of people who are hearing about this and, and choosing to do it, and people who who you know may actually even be in the business world, and and, and when they experience it, it, totally just you know they might go back and just really change the way that they're living. And and Taylor, one thing, uh, well, well, maybe we'll get a little bit more into like your backstory as well, and sort of why you chose to get into it, or. Maybe I already talked about that enough as it is, but but what I was just gonna say is, is just that. Um, oh, sorry. Hold on. I had a bit of a brain fart as to what I was actually about to say. Um, <laughs> yeah. No, no. What I was gonna say was a point that you brought up in a recent interview that you did, where you said that through all the experiences that you've done, you've met a lot of people who have experienced ayahuasca for themselves at these different retreats, on these different travels, and mm-hmm. on gen- in general, you've said that the people who ayahuasca are far more level far more balanced than the people in our society the majority of our people who are constantly just like dealing with anxiety and getting like upset about the little things and, and yeah. things like that you know right so yeah. but what's going on here right like <laughs> Uh, yeah, sorry, I don't know, just a, just an observation I, I was just kind of reiterating there. But, um, yeah, I'll, I'll sort of just throw this up in the air. Where where would you guys like to be able to, to take this conversation? I, I think what is always interesting is when we can attempt to describe using our words what some of these experiences for us were, were like. So I'm yeah. really interested in, um, in 
you, you mentioned that Taylor had met with some elementals. Um, <laughs> yes. I'm very interested to hear about that. Okay, yeah. yeah. Let's, the let's little uh, forest spirits. What, did you, what, what is the name of them? Elemental. What is it, sorry? Uh, the name that I'm familiar with, based on the uh, like movie Princess Mononoke. Yeah. Uh, hold on, because I'm spelling it wrong. Kotat. Uh, uh, it, it's not Kotamo. Uh, hold on. <laughs> Taylor, keep talking. Tell your story. <laughs> okay. If I'm, um, I'm not I'm mistaken, actually, it's elementals. Uh, okay, so that's, that's an English word. Like It's a, a, a spirit uh, that, embo- that embodies a certain either a plant or a water spirit or um, there, there could be fire elementals as well. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah, I was um, just going to say the the name is uh, Kodamas, so not Katamas or Katamas. Kodama. Okay. K-O-D-A-M-A. And, uh, and just type that into Google, the pictures of them from the Princess Mononoke movie. And, uh, yeah, Google them, and I'm going to post uh, in the chat picture. my painting ah. of these being before I even like saw the movie. So, yeah, which sort of connects the dots there. I love those moments. I love those moments where, yeah, so check out Taylor's uh, picture. We'll post a link for it in the show notes for those of you listening to it in the future as well on YouTube. But, yeah, I mean, there's, there's no, you know, that's not just coincidence. You, you're seeing something that people, you know, where did the story of the Kadama come from? It, it, it must have come from back in the day when people themselves were, were experiencing these other dimensions, so to speak. So, I mean, that's the thing that always gets me is that this, this isn't something new. Like, ayahuasca is not a new thing. I mean, people have been working with it for ages. People have been working with these experiences of these other dimensions, so to speak, for, for ages. So maybe, yeah, let's, Taylor, talk a little bit, bit more about uh, your, your experience with the Kadama. Okay, well, um, this was maybe my fifth ayahuasca ceremony that I had. And um, I was in Peru uh, at a center called Nature's Hospital, which is no longer running. Um, and I was just, you know, I had my cup of ayahuasca. I went back and sat down and uh, took a while for it to kick in. And when it did, I saw these little beings appear in front of me. And uh, they appeared, like, kind of one by one, just kind of, like, popped into my vision. And uh, this was with my eyes open, by the way. And uh, they kind of crowded around me. I don't know how many there were, maybe just, like, 20 or so. Um, but they crowded around me in a semicircle. And uh, they would come really close to my face and, like, kind of tilt their head and make this cute little noise. And they were just really curious and and really childlike. Um, And uh, I started telling them jokes for some reason. (laughs) I'm not really sure why. Um, It was like a stand-up comedy routine, which I I don't remember. (laughs) Um, I don't really remember what I was saying to them, uh, to be honest. But they loved it. And uh, every time I would tell a joke, they would kind of, like, make this weird little sound and come a little closer and uh they were just really lovable and and, and just adorable that's but so then, cool then they got all serious and uh they telepathically sent me this message um which said okay you need to know the difference i mean you need to know when it's time to be serious and when it's time to make jokes because if you can't take yourself seriously nobody else will and that just kind of like took me like by surprise I was like what these cute little adorable childlike things are telling me this like really you know strong message that I never really thought of for myself you know what I mean so mm-hmm. that was my experience with the little that's cool yeah mm-hmm. that's really yeah. really cool yeah Nick maybe if you have like more questions as to because I mean what what have you in, in your experiences with ayahuasca Nick have you come across similar like have you come across other entities so mm-hmm. to speak there was uh, in my last ceremony in the jungle. I I definitely felt the presence of the jungle. Like I remember, there was it was at was at the point of the the journey where I was in, in the darkest place, and I was fighting it and resisting it most strongly. That this thought in my mind kept saying, "Resist." Uh, uh, what did it say? It was give your give your your will to the jungle or um stop resisting the jungle or something like that. I'm struggling to find the word because I'm a bit tired. Um and eventually when I did that I felt uh I, I can't even put it into words, but I felt the the, the forest and the jungle and and it's 
I really believe that the jungle's alive. You know, it's a, it's a spirit of its own. You know, it's, it collectively consists of a bunch of little spirits, which I'm sure the the ones Taylor spoke of it includes those, and it also includes the spirits of every plant and animal and and living being in the forest. But it also has a collective spirit that's that's more than the sum of its parts. And I felt that that collective spirit, like it, it kind of surrounded me, and it, it it definitely did some healing work on me. Um, but I never had a I never had a personal encounter really with with any sort of spirit except for Taylor. Did you see the the feathered spaceship type things? Feathered spaceship. You know, Rob, Bobby <laughs> Marcus spoke of those weird flying. Um, no. Uh, okay. Well, that was the closest <laughs> thing to an entity that I I experienced. <clears throat> okay. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, there's there's a there's almost I guess you would say an infinite amount of things out there for for your U2 experience, and I think the big thing uh, with ayahuasca that I'm particularly interested in is the fact that it, it works as like this psychedelic mirror. You know, your your experience that you get out of ayahuasca is completely personal to you, and that's mm-hmm. one of the things we, we should reiterate: is the fact that you don't just do ayahuasca and get the same experience each time. Like the plant sort of decides what experience mm-hmm. it, it will give you, and, and there's actually this process where you are communicating with it. And um, a friend of mine went with his experience in ayahuasca, he, he told me, and, and he and he had this understanding going into it, but while he was going into it, like he was communicating with the spirit of Mother Ayahuasca and, and just being like, all right. You know, he was saying, okay, like I'm just, I can feel it coming on. Just uh, don't blast me out into hyperspace too far, you know, just to sort of like ease me into this. And, and, and that's what happened. And he was okay with it. And he had a comfortable experience. And, and, and in the same sense, like, yeah, really the energies that you sort of carry with you into the experience are reflected through what ayahuasca provides you with. So, so either That's Nick or Taylor, if you just want to talk about, you know, from your own, pers- own from, from your own perspective, like what has been reflected back at you through ayahuasca. Well, I wanted to ask Taylor because I personally never met Mother Ayahuasca. I never, she never appeared to me. Apparently, she appears to some people as this blue angel, or mm-hmm. or she takes other forms of, of like a, a female plant spirit. But I never. I can't say that I've ever met Mother Ayahuasca. I wanted to know if you have, Taylor. Um, I've never seen her, but I believe in my first Ayahuasca experience, um, I was possessed by her physically. Wow. Um, and oh, you have that, that's what that video was, right? The one that you never posted? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, and she spoke through me as well. Um, oh, wow. And... Uh, there was another time um, when I was in Peru that I heard a woman's voice speak to me, uh, mm-hmm. and I believe that was the spirit of ayahuasca as well, but I've, I've never seen her in a vision. Well, that makes sense. Have you ever, one of the things that I'm very interested in, and it's, it's the reason I'm actually going back to to Peru at the end of the year, is um, uh, many people speak of being taken to different galaxies and visiting different planets, Mm-hmm. And uh, that's something I'm really, really interested in. Did, did you did you ever experience that, Taylor? Um, no, not not with ayahuasca, but I am. I will be doing work with that more so with uh, DMT, uh, okay. like the um, smokable DMT. Oh, so, um, so you've done that before, or are you planning to yeah, do I that? Have, or, I have. And it it took you to a, a different planet, or what it, happened? It takes you somewhere else. I don't know <laughs> where. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Not here. <laughs> a buddy of mine has some of that, and he keeps trying to tell me to trying to convince me to to, to smoke it with him. But I'm I'm a little bit wary, to be honest, because it sounds like it's even more intense than ayahuasca. Yeah, well, well for for the people that are listening, I know I've already got some comments of people going call, calling or just messaging me and asking if they can call into the show to share some of their experiences. And uh, some of those spirit experiences may include uh, experiences with DMT. I mean, again, like the the process of what is happening with ayahuasca is releasing something. I mean, again, avoiding what's actually happening scientifically, it activates an experience within our mind that sort of takes off the filters and and and, and really, I mean. 
if you smoke DMT, it literally has the potential to sort of put you through the Stargate and and, and you go places and, and you see the world, you see the code of the matrix in, in a different way. So I'd love to be able to have some other people talk about their own personal experiences in the second half of the show. So we're just going to continue the conversation here some more. But for those of you who uh, maybe haven't listened before, we'll get you guys to call in in the second half. And we also are going to do a group meditation at some point, probably maybe around 12, 15, 12, 20 ish. And uh, just to sort of give you guys a preface as to what to expect from that meditation, I've actually got an MP3 like sound clip of an Icaros. And, and and I think that's something that we can talk about as well. So, I mean, there's a lot of different Icaros, and uh, Icaros are some of the, I guess you would say, there's the traditional songs and chants that the shaman will use during the ceremonies to help navigate the experience of the people doing ayahuasca, like using sound. And, and that's a, yeah, so either if Nick or Taylor, maybe let's just talk about that, like the actual process of what some of the shamans do, what their role is uh, within these ceremonies and what you guys have experienced from that. Yeah, um, well, I mean, I, I've I've experienced ayahuasca with uh, two different tribes. Um, the first time was with the Quechua people, um, and the rest of the time has been with Shipibos, um, and they have a, d- a different way of doing ceremony. Um, but for the, the Quechuas, they, um, they use a lot of instruments. Um, I wish I could remember the names of them. I, I, unfortunately, I don't. Um, and they use a thing called a shakapa, which um, is like a bundle of dried leaves that uh, it's kind of like a fan, um, makes a really cool sound. And uh, of course, they sing their ikaros. And um, what those do basically is they uh, they call in the plant spirits, um, you know, they, they call them into the ceremony uh, to be with us and uh, kind of take the negativity out, and as well as uh, kind of guides you on your uh ayahuasca trip. Yeah, the the known echoes apparently means song of power and I don't know if you noticed that as well, Taylor, but you can actually see the echo when it when when someone starts to sing it. I, I it, it's like uh I think the term is synesthesia where you can see the sounds in your mind like and I I found I found them incredibly powerful. They they can different acros continue into different states of consciousness and that just blew my mind mm-hmm. yeah 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 like sound is such a powerful thing and we've sort of reiterated that in the past but that's something that i'm really fascinated about is that you can actually sort of steer the experience it, you know from from the assistance of the shaman using sound like using the vibrations that that sound creates, and then yeah, actually being able to perceive sound in in a different way uh, when your filters are sort of taken back using the ayahuasca experience. So, um, guys, at, at this point, uh, where would you like to take the conversation? Because I really just want to be able to provide you guys with a chance to share with the audience, with the world out there, what you feel is important in in terms of this whole ayahuasca thing. What do we need to talk about? Oh, that's, uh, for me, <laughs> we could be here for a while. But. <laughs> for me, I just want people to understand that this this world is really sick, and, I, and I'm I'm not trying to sound like a negative person because I'm I, I consider myself very positive, and I'm, I think that we can figure things out. But the the world that the people in, in the West, we, the world we live in, is is very sick, mm-hmm. and ayahuasca comes from a place that that is healthy and whole and I'm speaking of the jungle like when you go there and you see how especially if you go deep into the jungle you see how people live and how balanced and connected they are with nature and and you see how much mother nature gives us and I already the more people who wake up to that the, the more chance there is that this the sickness can be can be exercised, I guess, is the is the word I'm looking for, mm-hmm. and I, I just hope people people wake up to that. I really do. Yeah, and they are. I mean, you you can see it. There's so many more aware people today than there were like even even months ago. Yeah, like I, yeah. I'm noticing it in my friends and in my family, and it's it's truly amazing. Um, but what I believe is that you know ayahuasca, like it, it has a plan, and it's you know, it, it is a vine, and, you know, as most vines 
the, you know, the, the common thing that most vines do is, you know, they crawl and they, they like to kind of spread out over whatever area they're in. And mm-hmm. uh, that is exactly what ayahuasca is doing through the people who uh, drink the medicine. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I mean, we don't even have to try that hard to get it out there because it's just, it's it's getting out there. Yeah. And at a really, like, you know, quick, <clears throat> which is fantastic. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Look at it. The the vine nature of it, I mean, when you guys were talking earlier about, like, having experienced or interacted with the uh, the spirit itself of ayahuasca, the mother ayahuasca, I mean, I, I from my own interpretation and, and things I've heard, like, people would often interpret, like, the vines that they sort of encounter within the experience. Because, I mean, mm-hmm. there's common accounts within ayahuasca. People see, like, serpents. They see that vine. They see that DNA helix. And, and mm-hmm. that in itself is, like, the nature of the my, mother ayahuasca. It is like that serpent knowledge, okay. which you know, is, is a very esoteric thing in it, in itself. So, man, I'm I'm getting just getting goosebumps thinking about <laughs> the jungle. Seen, like, yeah, uh, <laughs> it's I, I, coming I was, back. I was telling someone the other day, like if I'm I'm generally a very happy person, and far more so since since doing ayahuasca. But if I'm ever feeling slightly down, I just think of the jungle and and those. The, the ayahuasca journeys I took, and it always puts a smile on my face. Mm-hmm. And uh, mm-hmm. it's such it's such an adventure as well. That if you're doubting, like you know, there's, there's so much, there's so much like bullshit in in the I guess the new age world. You know, there's so many people trying to sell you crap, and so much of it you can you can't really tell if it's real or not. You know, you can you might read a book on chakras, and you might wonder your whole life is that true? Do we really have these weird spinning energy vortices throughout our body, you know, but like ayahuasca will show you the truth of the spirit world. It's, it's not, you'll never doubt again. You'll never think like, is all this crazy stuff in my, is it just in my head? You know, because once you've seen it, you understand forever. And that's one of the cool things about it, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it it stays with you. People mm-hmm. people talk about that 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 you know the the spirit of ayahuasca is with you once you once you've done it. Mm-hmm. And 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 yeah, that's an interesting thing. I mean, uh, for those of you who sort of had your own experience, I mean, you you look at what is happening here. These these are opening us up to the experiences that our mind is naturally capable of producing in its own. And, and sort of going back to the idea that the uh, the DMT itself, if, if that's what we want to root it back to, is also a release, at, at, again, at birth, at sleep, and at death, and also like within deep states of meditation. So, I mean, in the same states where we're sort of, our spirits moving around in a different state, in a different way, that's when like this, DMT, this experience, this like Stargate sort of opens up and, and, and activates. And and I think what's really interesting is that for those of us who have had those similar experiences, if you really just sort of sit with yourself for a moment, think like, can you, can you sort of bring yourself back to that? Can you sort of like bring back the memories of, of what those experiences were? So, so for Taylor and for Nick, what are some of the things that you have that, that you can share with us that you've brought back from these experiences with uh, ayahuasca, like a, a good quote that I often think of is, is, is the the late and wonderful Terence McKenna, and not to make an exact quote, but he talks about the idea that you know, like, he, like how we are an explorer. Our job is to sort of like go out there and and catch and, and sort of like put out a net to try and like bring back like so, some ideas that we uh, when we go out into these other states these other continents of the human experience as mm-hmm. as a psychonaut so so what are some of the things that that you guys feel that you've brought back from those experiences that we can share with uh, more of the people out there so Nick Taylor whoever wants to go for that I'll let you go ahead Nick cuz I'm going to think about this for a minute okay, okay. yeah um, for me, it's it's just been a, a profound change in in the way I relate to myself and the way I relate to the world. And I don't know about you, Taylor, but I find I'm just I'm a lot I'm a lot less hard on myself. Mm-hmm. You know, like it, it's I used to be very very uh, self-critical and very 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 harsh with myself, and I, I just I just love myself a lot more. Yes. And, and, <laughs> do you know what I mean? And oh yeah, I was talking about this in the last interview that I had. Actually, it's completely, yeah, it's the exact same thing that I was saying, pretty much. And another thing is, um, 
Oh, sorry, I, I completely forgot what I was going to say. It's so, it's so early oh, in the morning sorry. here. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, this, you know, we all carry stuff with us from our childhood. Well, not all of us, I guess. There's, there's certain people who, who had really pleasant and perfect childhoods. Uh, but many of us carry things with us um, from our childhood and from, from adolescence and, and from the rest of our lives. Like the experiences we have. So certain negative experiences can can influence us and affect us, and, and we can carry those with us. And what I found with ayahuasca is that it kind of it just released a lot of those negative things from me. It, I just processed them and and released them, and they don't they don't disturb me anymore. They're just gone. And mm-hmm. that is actually the thing that I'm most thankful for. When I, when I, if you speak about bringing things back, it's this. It, it, it's self development. It's just, it's. Does that make sense, Taylor? Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> it's so funny because those are the exact two things that pretty much I was going to say. Like, I mean, I've held on to so much as a kid, you know, and, and I, and it, growing up, you know, I, I just started to, to hate people and I hate my family and just resent and, and mm-hmm. hold on to all these different things. And I, I talked about it in one of my videos as uh, there was a black box in my chest, which I would just kind of throw all this shit into and, like, wow. hold on to. And what Ayahuasca did was open that up and allow me to get rid of wow. a lot of it. Mm-hmm. So That's that's interesting. That's yeah. really interesting. So, so, are you going to try it, Skull Babylon? <laughs> Uh, that, that's a good question, and, and, and yes, I, I would like to experience uh, the ayahuasca brew it, it itself. And um, I mean, <laughs> you know, it, it's interesting, and, uh, and and I just have to be careful about how I talk about things. But I mean, people have, you know, they'll ask me like, what experiences have I had for myself, and and outside of dreaming and uh, outside of, uh, you know, just psychedelic experiences within our natural state, uh, have I experienced something else? Yes. And uh, there was a time, and, and, you know, this is kind of big news, because I honestly, I, li- I haven't really disclosed this up until this point, but I think in this point, uh, the conversation is, is important. And that's something that, that we say here, here and there again, is that, it, it, yes, these substances, they may be, quote unquote, illegal, but talking about them is not. And, and that is what we're here to do. We're here to share the experience here, what we have brought back from it. And uh, that's something that well, we can segue this into the later conversation in the show. But yes, I have had my own experience experiences with the smokable DMT of, of that nature. And, uh, and and that, for me, that was a lot of reformation. It, it, it confirmed for me the fact that there was something more to this reality. You know, you, mm-hmm. you're sort of growing up and, and you're seeing the world through the illusion that it is. And often you don't even, there's up to a certain point, you don't even realize that it's an illusion. You just mm-hmm. think it is how it is. But then you start to question and be like, there's got to be more. There's got to be more. You know, you start seeing movies like The Matrix. You start hearing about the mm-hmm. spoon being able to bend. You're like, there's something more, right? My experiences with uh, the DMT, uh, it confirmed for me the fact that, like, yes, we it, we are actually, like, spiritual beings. We are, mm-hmm. you know, whatever that term means for you. Like, the, the, the word spiritual for me, it refers to an awareness of the unity that we have, like, beyond ourselves, like, whether it be, like, with the fact that everybody is an extension of, like, the one bigger consciousness experiencing itself through different perspectives. That's a good definition. Just, yeah. Thank you, yeah. Or or just the idea that, you know, like, we are we are more than our physical body and, and the idea of, like, energy emitting emotions and things like that. Like, when, when I did DMT... I could see the code of the matrix. That's that's the best metaphor. I think metaphors are a very powerful thing. And people have seen the matrix. That's the best metaphor that I can use to describe it. So imagine the code of the matrix. Like that scene when Neo dies in the first one. Neo gets shot by by Agent Smith. And then he comes back and he can see the world like differently. He's gone through Mm -hmm. that experience. He -hmm. awakens in that sense. So it's like that. But instead of like green ones and zeros, it's like 
fractals and sacred geometry unfolding mm-hmm. infinitely upon itself, and it is far more beautiful than anything that words can even explain. And me just talking to you, again, doesn't get you even close to actually experiencing it. But some mm-hmm. of the closest things that we do have to it, and again, I've referenced this numerous times, are the Alex Gray paintings that he does. And, and he oh, himself, and he himself yeah. says that, that part of his mission in art is to be able to represent what he's experienced with his DMT and with his ayahuasca experiences and be able to visually represent it as, as well. So, I mean, for me, that experience, it, it did. It changed my life. There was no going back at that point. I knew for, for certain that there was something more. And, and up until this point, you know, just from my own personal perspective, like, what's my purpose? My purpose has never been to just, like, with this whole paradigm shifting. Because, like, I, I, I had my experience with the DMT, and uh, it, it was on a beach during a sunrise, just to sort of set the mood for you. And, That's and, a pretty, and pretty good set, set oh, thing, dude, right? it was it was it was perfect. Like it was perfect. The synchronicities leading up to that, it was just right where I needed to be. And uh, I, I did Syrian Rue. I used the the brew, which is an inhibitor, which allows the uh, when you smoke DMT. There's a part of your brain that instantly says, like, nope, this isn't going to happen. God put the filters back on, and it just pushes it out of your brain. And that's why when you smoke DMT, it commonly only lasts for, like, four to five minutes. But if you do another uh, – if you work with another plant, uh, specifically Syrian rue, it, 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 it helps to bring in the different parts of the chemicals into your brain that prevent it from kicking it out of your brain right away. So for me, I had the initial five-minute blast off, so to speak, and then from there, it was a, a good like 20 minutes of being able to see things like with the code of the matrix and even eventually being able to like walk around on the beach and, and I was still I, I was the whole experience for me was open eye and uh, yeah it was just it, it was an incredibly it was an incredibly amazing experience and, and some of the things that um, and, and we'll, I'll get you guys to sort of talk about some of like the uh, visceral experiences of it from your end of things when I ingested it for, for for within that first initial moment. There's like there's a membrane that you go through. There literally is, and and it's like this series of colors. So and it happens very fast, and it's totally just like it pulls you right into it, and you are just reality is completely shifted at that point. And for me, it was going through the colors of like red and yellow and blue, and and. Which is interesting, and because I mean, if you've heard the song like Lateralis by Tool, they mentioned those similar colors <laughs> right off the beginning, right? Yeah. So I'm like, hey, those guys know what they're talking about. They've seen that too, right? So I mean, there's like this membrane that you go through, and then I, it was my vision was totally overwhelmed with this color, this bright color, and then I came through it and I came into this world, and I and and it looked completely different. And one of the things that really stuck with me was the fact that sound was different as well. Sound in itself wasn't condensed using the filters that we commonly have. Because again, like the best way I can explain it is that the reality that we perceive in our waking life on our day-to-day average life is what reality is with filters. If you were to take mm-hmm. back those filters, reality is so much more, there's so much more noise. There's so much more information. There's mm-hmm. so much going on. And if we could see reality like that all the time, we wouldn't be able to function. We wouldn't be able to drive <laughs> cars. We wouldn't be able to like write things properly. It's just... Well, apparently this is a good analogy that is your your brain is the the faucet or the tap that regulates the flow of information from Mm -hmm. from everything into this physical realm right and what happens especially with people who take the wrong kind of psychedelic drugs um it it used to happen a lot it still happens i'm sure with people who take um acid uh is that you actually break that faucet and the the rush of information Mm -hmm. It's just too great, and then you can't deal with being in the real world anymore because there's just there's too much sensory information, too much that you cannot process, and that's when certain people can develop psychoses. And the the thing about ayahuasca is that the way I see it as being different from something like acid is that the spirit of the plant, the spirit of ayahuasca, is protecting you and guiding you in the journey, and she. I really do believe that she will not allow that to happen to you. I, I think that she will only give you as much as you can handle. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. Um, whereas if you just go to some rave or trance party or something and you take a few tabs of acid, that's a, to me that's a far bigger gamble, and I, I personally wouldn't do that. Um, but I, again, I could be wrong. It's just my own theory. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was just um, just c- kind of finishing a thought that I had when I was just mentioning my experiences there. Um, it, it, when I was talking about the audio changing, it, 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 there's a warbliness to it, and 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 I know again, maybe you guys have had like the the audio must change for you guys when you do the ayahuasca experience, but like my own voice was warbled. <laughs> which is a very interesting thing. So like when I was trying to talk to myself, I was just like, I was like, whoa, 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 man. This is <laughs> meow, man. Like seriously, that's, that's, cool. what it, that's what it sounded like. Like that's, that's the best way I can almost like reiterate it for you. That's really but, cool. uh, but yeah, that, that was an interesting thing too, to think that like sound itself, the way how we commonly hear it is not actually what sound itself is like functioning. Like it's far more multidimensional and layered and warbled out and, and, and things like that. And, and uh, yeah, just walk through go life. ahead. Dave. There's some people who walk through life and they that's what they're seeing and that's what they're hearing. You know, think and they think that's even, it. even even for, for people like Taylor yourself and, and and me, like we already are starting to look at the world a little bit differently. Like maybe five or ten percent differently because we've taken things like DMT and ayahuasca and it's it's expanded our vision our, and our perception, right? But mm-hmm. there are certain people who are born um with certain gifts and abilities and they are when they hear sound, they're hearing warbling all the time. Or when they look at someone, they see their soul, or they see yeah, like bonds or whatever. And and that to me blows my mind. There's some people who are like that all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. 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 And and uh, kind of going back to like what I felt my purpose was after after that point, similar to Alex Gray, I wanted to be able to express uh, uh, to be able to reinforce through my own experience that that these experiences exist that there is more to this reality that that we are so much there's so much more to experience there's so much more than just like what mainstream culture is telling us but not to do it in a point where i'm like walking out to people and shaking them and just being oh my god like you know like the matrix is real like blah, 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 and just i'm freaking them out and there's like what the hell is wrong with you son you know and then yeah. what, what, the, the way we have to do it and from from my own perspective is to be able to just live that experience with you carry that with you and then sort of help create conversation where someone can see and know this through their own process you don't want to take that away from them you want people to be able to connect the dots and get to where they need to be at their own at their own pace and and you're just sort of there like letting it happen so i imagine you know if i were to be able to take my experience and and create this amazing painting of it and, and then just go around showing people and be like guys this is it this is what i experienced this is what i saw like i would rather encourage people to sort of create their own painting over time and then eventually be like hey man check this out and i'm like that's right like there it is see like you got it that's exactly what i was talking about without actually having to to tell them how to think sort of what we were talking about earlier at the beginning of the podcast like you don't want to just go up to you don't want to go into ayahuasca expecting thinking that you can expect what to get out of it because it will just radically be unique to to yourself in in a lot of ways so yeah (laughs) completely agree what was the most profound experience you had while on ayahuasca taylor my most profound experience on ayahuasca. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> I was actually going to make a video about this one, but uh, I just haven't gotten around to it yet. Um, but it, I had uh, I had smoked DMT uh, twice uh, in this in this week, and mm-hmm. then I went and had an ayahuasca ceremony. And uh, what happened for me was um, I drank less ayahuasca than normal. I drank maybe like a, a tablespoon of it, so not very much at all. And uh, I threw it up right away, and so I thought, you know, I may as well, you know, go up and get another little tablespoon of it just, you know, to make sure I get it. Um, And so I went up and had another tablespoon full and went back and sat down in my spot, and within five minutes, I kid you not, I was in, like, full-blown DMT space. And uh, usually it takes, you know at least, you know, 20 minutes, half an hour for it to even start kicking in. Mm -hmm. Um, But literally just within five minutes and it was, you know, I was seeing bright colors and I was in this whole other like room almost. And uh, it was actually a place that I've been while smoking DMT. Mm -hmm. So I went, I went back to that same space and uh, I actually met these, these beings there um, who were helping me um, purge. Like, they would tell me, okay, you're going to throw up now. Okay, now you're going to purge the other oh, way. Wow. Okay, now turn around and you're going to throw up. 
and like it was just it was really strange That's and incredible. um yeah and actually once i was you know f- finished purging um I, I got up and left the bathroom and they like these beings told me to go take a shower <laughs> and 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 I kind of was like, well, no, I mean, I'm in the middle of the ceremony. Why would I go shower? I'm going to go back and sit down. And they're like, no, go shower. Please go shower. And so I did. And um, it was really what strange. What do these beings look like? Uh, it, it's really hard. <laughs> it's really hard to describe <laughs> what they look like. But um, they're kind of, I call them my, my gingerbread people. They kind of look like gingerbread <laughs> men, um, but they're, they don't have any, like, facial features or anything. They're just kind of like a basic outline um, mm-hmm. but with really squiggly like arms and stuff. But anyway, um, I, I went to the shower and I turned it on and I was fully clothed. And uh, they were like, "No, you have to stop. Like, you need to you need to take your clothes off." <laughs> and I was like, "Uh, okay." So, so I did, and um, you know, I, I got back under the water, and it was as if I was feeling water for the very first well, time. Nice. And I, and I started laughing, but it was not my laugh. It was you know, a completely different laugh and I was screaming and I was just, I was so happy to be in this water and uh, I was surrounded by all these different tree spirits who were laughing with me and, you know, encouraging me and and whatever. Mm -hmm. And uh, I realized that what happened was the spirit of DMT itself had come into my body and used it to experience water on human flesh. Wow, that's that's incredible. (laughs) And, oh, like that was just that, wow. was, that that is my like yeah. underneath my first experience that's my my top like my second top experience wow, for sure that is, that is just mind blowing yeah and water is such a key thing yeah like i think water is like the root source of, of a lot of what's going going on here even in terms of what i was talking about like the the stargate idea like when i think stargate i, I think water and and even you know, going back to like the reference of the movie Stargate, there was water in the Stargate, and and I and I've often thought about like taking showers themselves as like going through the water Stargate. Like I literally refer to it sometimes as that. That's and, uh, yeah, water. Uh, I I mean I resonate with water just so much. But uh, yeah. Um, okay. Now now I'll, I'll just sort of throw this up there because I'd like to be able to bring on another fellow to talk about uh, some of his own perspectives about like mm-hmm. being able to see the the space of the elementals and his other ideas about filters and DMT experience. So um, do you guys have something that you feel you would like to add at this moment or we can just sort yeah, of go I ahead. Actually just, I just wanted to bring up that, um, you know, most of us go into this wanting to learn something from the plants and, and, and take something, you know, that they either want to show us about ourselves or about the world or, or you know, we want to learn from them. Um, but what most people don't understand is not only are we learning from them, but they're taking a lot from us. So, oh, I never ever thought about it that way. That's very interesting. So we are teaching these plants as much as they are teaching us. Nice. And when when you can go and have an experience with the smokable DMT, um, and then go into an ayahuasca ceremony, they can take the information you learn um, that you've learned on your DMT trip, and um, basically understand that side of DMT rather than the yeah. more like the plant side, you know what I mean? They're they're kind of getting both sides of DMT, which is which is really really amazing to me, and and they really appreciate it too. Like they will give you more in return, so it, it's it's really a give yeah. and take kind of deal. <laughs> That is, thanks for bringing that up, Taylor. Like, that is such a cool idea that, mm-hmm. that yeah, like, I, you know, we're experiencing reality from where we are. And, and the idea that these intelligence are experiencing reality from where they are. And, and mm-hmm. their, their reality to them is quite normal. And for them to experience our reality, for them to experience <laughs> what it feels like to stand in a shower, like, mm-hmm. that just blows their mind. Like, yeah. like we, we take for granted the amazingness of this uh, th- third dimensional experience. Mm-hmm. I mean, the fact that we can interact with it the way we do so yeah like we we that is amazing that is like bridging that gap between again like and those other entities they're just further fractals of the universal consciousness mm-hmm. experiencing itself so i mean yeah, yeah it's it's working with it and that's I awesome thing um, after one of the ceremonies i did we were all talking about our experiences and and one of the guys was explaining how the the trees he was he was talking to some to a tree spirit and the tree spirit was basically explaining to him that the 
trees think human beings are awesome. They just they they're in, they're in awe of us. Mm-hmm. It's like, it's like mm-hmm. that we just walk around and do things, and we have hands and. And at the time, it, it was interesting to me, but it also made me really sad because there we are just destroying them, you know, like, mm-hmm. yeah. you know, they hold us in, in such awe and they, they admire us so much oh. and then we just walk around chopping them down and just ruining the ecosystems in which they inhabit. And it's, yeah, and this yeah. is why we need to learn from the trees because the trees only show us unconditional love. No matter what we do to them, they will always love us. Mm-hmm. And that is a huge lesson that people need to learn, you know, just show unconditional love no matter what comes at you from people. Like, you just got to, you know, be love. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, trees have feelings, too, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sure it's bullshit, but it, 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 it's, it's now true. I know without a shadow of a doubt, like, yeah. trees are entities. They are aware entities. There's no doubt in my mind about it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And and it's interesting cuz you know you, you go back and and this is the experience that we chose for ourselves. We we sort of we sort of put ourselves in the situation where we intentionally disconnected ourselves from that knowing so that we could go through this crazy whack ass experience and then come back to it to the point where we are now where just like holy crap guys like like we need to sort of you know look at how we're living things and, and in the process really just humble ourselves and just be like wow like you know we have such we have such amazing things at at, at our fingertips and, and just oh uh, yeah it really I mean experiences with ayahuasca experiences with DMT experiences with like deep states of meditation and these other aspects of reality just open you up to to, to the fact that they help give you purpose in in your life you know it takes away the the illusion of of mundaneness and, and just gives you a lot of motivation to to do something with it and uh, just a side note guys I was talking earlier about the idea of like the DNA the sphere of this like the snake and, and the symbology of that keep in mind that 2013 is the year of the snake i was as well. going to so, bring that up earlier yeah so this is like this is like the year of ayahuasca bringing itself back into the mass consciousness of yeah. of the world you know it is it had this plan in itself i mean in the same way we can set an agenda like there's something going on on the other side of the spirit mm-hmm. realm of things where it's it's saying like all right now's the time like let's let's do this let's work together like mm-hmm. as one with the humans sort of thing yeah very cool very very cool <laughs> all right um th- now again I, I i have that other fellow who who we can bring on do you guys want to do that now or Why would not? you like to yeah yeah okay cool so let's do that now so the guy who we're going to bring on to the show he's been on paradigm shift radio a couple times and he's always got an interesting perspective to share kurt hardesty is going to join us once again and his website is intrinsic health dot com i may need to double check that he knows what it is so well let's bring on kurt and he's going to share some more information with us here tonight hello hello, hello. Kurt. hey kurt hello hello <laughs> all right kurt thanks for joining us here again on paradigm shift radio so it, sorry again i'll just confirm what your website is and then yeah just go go um, right ahead what would you like to bring to the in, show tonight intrinsic health and wellness dot com that's right okay cool all right. So yeah, go ahead. Um, we, whatever you want to talk about. I don't I guess I guess I guess I sort of wanted to talk about like like filters in a way and the um like when we're when we're talking about neurons and all this other stuff, it's like it's it's almost like through a filter in a way, right? Like when you're talking about your pineal gland secreting some sort of hormone or a neurotransmitter, like all of that dialogue is already through a um a filter. Yeah, but it's, it's the only reference points we have as human beings. Right, 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 right. Um, the you can uh, what is it? It's there's you. So my so my experience with with DMT, I've done it. Um, I, I think I did it a little bit like um, what so, somebody I forget who was saying it before it was with the Syrian Rue and the, the you know the MOI and the the oral mm-hmm. thing. It's kind of a bastardized ayahuasca. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then and then the, and then straight up DMT, and it and it seems like the um, the the filtering mechanisms of of what I've discovered is that when you stop listening with your whole body, is when the universe breaks down. Um, so, like if if you stop ignoring sensory information from your your hands or from your feet when you're looking at somebody, um, you start seeing 
certain things because like your whole body is sort of an antenna and and the the dmt as far as i could tell when i was trying it was um it was getting in the way of the the most blatant signals in our our body which is sort of the action potentials and then that makes the stuff that like say our even our atoms are doing if you're going really really deep or just the background sort of like electrical state of the body if you're going sort of deep um, if it if it kind of screws up with your ability to see or make sense of the really obvious electrical activity of the body, then you drop into your atomic electrical activity, which is like incredibly quantumly entangled with everything using uh -huh. this sort of paradigm. And it's it's almost like it's not a filter. It just it just it I guess it blocks the stuff that we normally are really 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 infatuated with. Mm. And then mm -hmm. it, we can see it, and all and all that shit's like already there all the time. Yeah. We listen with our whole being. Like if we looked at every single person, not with our eyes, and we listen with them not just with our ears, but like with if if we if we tried to attune our entire skin, all of our bones, every single one of our internal organs, our brain, our eyes, our like everything on on a single experience on a single person. It gets, it starts to feel DMT like or DMT well, trippy, and I think that's the shit that we normally, um, pardon my French, like sort of ignore. But apparently, that's what Buddhist monks are. Well, when when a Buddhist monk reaches a state of enlightenment, that's or the, that's what the Buddha experienced. Is he was a, he was able to see reality for what it was without egoic patterns interfering, mm -hmm. and it's something that I uh, wanted to mention on the show. So it's a good thing you've started speaking about it. Um, is I really do believe that the when I mentioned earlier in, in the show how there's there's certain negative thought patterns that can stay with you as a result of past experiences and those things come between you and your experience of reality and I found that ayahuasca was just clearing a lot of those things out so I can have a more direct experience of reality. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. 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 <laughs> I mean to us. <laughs> it's I I don't I guess I just, I wanted to call in and share this because it's been a little bit mind blowing to me because it's it's um cuz a lot of the times like I've I've done these drugs or had these experiences and I, I wasn't sure what I was doing and recently I was I've been starting to realize that I was looking at reality with my whole being. Wow. And like the filters that I put on my brain was this culture and this reality telling me, no, you can't see with your skin. No, you cannot hear with your kidneys. No, mm -hmm. you can't like feel with your bones. And so mm -hmm. we like get rid of all of that data, even though like all you can't, you, you, you can't experience another person with your atoms. Like that would just be silly. Mm -hmm. And so all these drugs and everything, they seem to have like, um, they, they assist us in, listening with a different part of our body that we didn't think was associated with a particular sense. Like when we're, when we're seeing visuals, I think it's because we've decided to see with a part of our body that is not an eye. Or if we're becoming, if we start hearing like celestial music or whatever, it's because we started to hear with a part of our body that is not an ear. Hmm. You know, why do we only have to hear with our ears and see with our eyes? That's a very, very good, good, um, Way to look at it. I had never. That's really expanded my my consciousness. I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Yeah, thank you. And sir. and just we and just yeah. That's that's basically what I wanted to share tonight because it's been it's been a profound um, realization for me recently of just to sit there and like whenever I look at something or someone to like give them all of my skin, all of my guts, all of my brain, all of my whatever, <laughs> and then, and then all of a sudden I'm starting to see like auras pop. And I'm realizing that, like, when you're starting to see auras, it's, like, maybe something that you're picking up with your, like, the hairs on your feet, you know? Like, who knows? <laughs> and we're just told not to fucking explore there. That's yeah. so interesting that you bring this up, because I, I actually, um, you know, I went through a lot of these kind of thoughts in my head, not about, um, you know, being able to hear or see with different parts of the body, but just with, like, the beliefs that we have as human beings, like, you know, collective beliefs that, yes, we feel with our skin and all this, um, even though everybody agrees on that, they are still so limiting because, I mean, the way that I see it is that if we really are the creators of this universe, we literally can create anything we want. But 
based on the fact that we believe so hard, you know, about something, then that is what that is going to be in our reality. Do, do you get what I'm kind of saying? So yeah, we, is pretty we much limit every- ourselves. Yes. Yeah, belief, beliefs and, and culture in general, which is basically just a bunch of beliefs, yeah. you know, societally accepted beliefs, is a, a limitation. There's no doubt in my mind that that's true. It's they're almost like the, the, the expression I use is locks on your mind. You know, from the second you're born, your parents and the school system and television and everything start weaving these spells and these locks on your mind, allowing you to or that dictate what you what you do and don't experience. And if you think of a, a shaman who's grown up in the rainforest, he, he will have certain locks on his mind, like the language that he's been given by his mom and dad is, is I guess, a lock. So, but but he also, I really believe, he'll have far fewer than the average person. And um, something that I'm exploring with with yoga is, um, you know, there's a there's a a theory that mental flexibility and physical flexibility are linked or closely linked and I think they're the same thing. Sorry to interject, but I, yeah. I think they're basically the exact same freaking thing. That's interesting. Can you can you expand on that? Um flexibility, if you understand the human nervous system, is based on the the mind being comfortable with where the body is. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm your body seems to be doing and this if if you want to ask like what is a specialty of mine i've i've been studying movement from sort of an esoteric perspective for a while and and it um you you basically want to maintain maintain this dynamic equilibrium that uh bucky meister fullerene described as consegrity mm-hmm. and so if you're operating consegrity consegrity or whatever um your none of your joints are compressive structures, so the cartilage is not supposed to bump into each other. Like your spine is supposed to be pulled apart by the muscles, so are your knees, so are your hips. Everything is supposed to be pulled apart and held Mm -hmm. in this dynamic tension. And when you can't keep that dynamic tension, your nervous system keeps you from going into ranges of motion that would inhibit or that would compromise that tension. So either because you're not strong enough or because the brain isn't comfortable with a particular range of motion, mm. there's it, muscles aren't short. Like the stretch reflex is actually the brain contracting the muscle mm-hmm. for you saying you shouldn't go there mm-hmm. because it's dangerous. Mm. You know what, you yeah. know what's gonna, what, what I think is, is uh, what, what blew my mind is when I got back from the trip to Peru and I'd been taking, I'd done four ayahuasca ceremonies and I, I went straight to um, the next day. I went straight to the Jiu Jitsu Academy to do Jiu Jitsu, and I was like 30 or 40 percent more flexible than I was before I left on that trip. Oh wow! And, yeah, and I really believe it's because my mind had been made more flexible and expanded. Um, I've yeah. noticed that on mushrooms as well. Like, um, just That's like a, like a pretty sick level of um, increased flexibility from nothing other than my mind relaxing. Yeah, that's what I was just about to say. Like in terms of like metaphors and stuff, these, these experiences with ayahuasca and things, like yeah, they're they're a chance for us to to expand the flexibility of our mind. Mm-hmm. Like I think that's a you know that's a way that people can sort of be like, okay, yeah, like I think I get what they're saying at this point. So, but just yeah. as you can have just as you can have too flexible of a body, you know, I mean, if there's certain you gotta be careful. Stuff, but, yeah, you can have too flexible yeah. of a mind, you know. Yeah, um, you need some yeah. as a, what was it tensegrity. You need some, yeah, some the tensegrity kind of thing breaks down if um, it's if any of the tension members become too slack, it'll break, and and mm-hmm. if they become too tight, it breaks as well. Yeah, yeah. It's um, like, so it's this yeah. dynamic balance thing. Look it up on um, Google or something. Yeah, it's yeah, it's pretty like. Easy. I- I, again, going back to metaphors, it's the idea of like stretching that that rubber band. Like we have to be careful because like the further we pull it out, if if it, if it let go, if we snap it, it's gonna like fly all the way back. It's kind of like the law of the pendulum. Like the further you push it, the further it swings back. But it's also understanding that reality in itself is this constant process of two steps forward or one step forward, two steps back, sort of thing, or two steps forward, one step back, something. So we have to like almost prepare ourselves to to have that sort of step back and understand that that step back is like the most important step. 
step because almost think of yourself like walking up a mountain and if, and if you anticipate that step back you can just like gently sort of go back with it but if you're not expecting it you'll friggin roll right mm-hmm. down the hill sort of thing mm-hmm. so again just mm-hmm. just another metaphor there now now guys I do have uh, I do have that audio track of the Icaros that that I referred to earlier in the show and uh, I don't I mean it would be int- like I sort of had the idea of like getting into to a meditation a group meditation thing and almost like simulating uh, an ayahuasca experience so to speak just by like imagining that we're just kind of like sitting around and listening to the Icaros and seeing where where the mind goes with that um I I mean as interesting as that idea is I'm more interested particularly in just getting some of the conversation that we can while while we're here on the air but I would still be able to uh, like to be able to play some of that for the people listening just to get an idea. My of, uh, my roommate who just went to an ayahuasca ceremony just yelled at me to tell you to play them. Um, play them. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to. <laughs> um, and he literally just went to them yesterday. I don't know. You can get him to call in, but I have to get going. And it was wonderful okay. talking. And thank you for having me on. Thanks, buddy. And right. this was an awesome show. Uh, so thank you both very much. Thanks, Kurt. Thanks, buddy. And we'll we'll be in touch. Yeah. Okay. Have an excellent evening. Thank you. Bye. Okay. Good night. Okay. All right. So yeah. Okay. I mean, without yeah, without having to rush things, we do have about twenty minutes left in the show. So let's just take a couple minutes to put aside and just sort of a uh, let's do that. I, I think I'd like to go back to the idea of the meditation, but it won't be like full out. Like we'll we'll just do it for a few minutes at least. And for anybody else who would like to be able to call into the show, please uh, do not hesitate to to call in. You can call in to the actual host number, which is three four seven five three nine five four nine three. That's Three four seven five three nine five four nine three, or call in using Skype through the Blog Talk link. And uh, there is another fellow who I know has a experience with DMT that he would like to share, and he's right now the only other person in the queue. So if that's what it is, then then we'll come back and, and we'll talk with him and sort of wrap things up a bit a bit there, and also bring up a couple uh, interesting uh, points. Um, uh, like a couple of just interesting things that I'd like to be able to to mention in terms of uh, I know Nick has a uh, has some uh, he you're, t- you're Nick you're just to sort of plant the seed you're talking about uh, sort of doing your own podcast show in, in the future that you're interested in starting are you not? Um, yeah, there's there's uh, there's a possibility. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. There's a. I mean, <laughs> it's not something I'm advertised or anything because it's nothing concrete. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. Yeah, the, the, the in the future. Yeah, the the idea is there, and, and also, guys, for for those of you uh, who have enjoyed Paradigm Shift Radio, of course, just keep an eye open for for future episodes and go back to listen to any of the past episodes. And, and one thing that has come up recently, and I'll just mention this now, just while it's relating to the topic, uh, as Paradigm Shift gets more popular, we we understand that there are people in different parts of the world who are listening to it from different time zones, and and someone else brought up the idea of introducing a Paradigm Shift Radio UK edition. So so the, keep your eyes open for that, and if that's something that if anybody is interested and getting involved with, please feel free to message the Facebook page at facebook.com slash Paradigm Shift Radio. And uh, as me and Nick sort of talked about off on the side, I think that's something that he himself would be interested in getting involved with in, in some way or another. So if you enjoyed listening to, to Nick here tonight, then uh, just stay tuned and, and, and you'll probably see him around again in, in some way or another. And, and just getting the information out there is uh, just something that, you know, that that's what we got to do. We got to talk about this stuff, right? Like if we don't talk about it, then we don't learn about it. It. So, conversation is just such a key and vital thing, for sure. And uh, so, with that said, we'll uh, we'll go into uh, the the Icaros. I, I'd like to be able to share that, and then after that, we'll get into some closing notes, and we'll also bring on another fellow to talk about his DMT experience. So, guys, let's just do that. Let's just sort of like get comfortable. And uh, now, I'll, I'll sort of. I'll just put it out there. Would either of you guys sort of like to walk us in to the Icaros uh, just audio track? Would you sort of like to say, like, you know, get us comfortable, get us into that meditative state? Like, Nick, perhaps that might be something. I mean, it's kind of on a whim, but I think we could do that. Right, as in listen to an Icaro? I'm sorry, I'm... I'm... Yeah, just sort of sort of set us up, you know, just as as if you were leading us into a meditation. So, you know, just sort of like bring in that first breath, tell us to sort of relax our body, guided meditation, and then I'll play the audio um, track. <laughs> Buddy, maybe Taylor might be better at that. 
<laughs> I was really hoping you would, to be honest. Well, that's what... <laughs> Because I mean, I'll I'll do it anyways. I'll just sort of simulate it. And I know I haven't had like the the actual ayahuasca like with a shaman experience in in that sense. But I mean, I'm not going to overcomplicate it. So maybe I'll just I'll I'll just do what I was going to do. And okay. uh, yeah, we'll just sort of see what happens from there. So let's do that. So everybody who's listening, uh, as you know, we usually try to do a group meditation with Paradigm mm-hmm. Ship Radio, and, and and let's uh, just sort of look at it that way as as another sh- short group meditation. So and keep I'm in mind that. It that there are people all across the world listening to this in the present and in the future present. And uh, we are connecting with each other when we take part in this shared uh, meditation experience. So let's just get comfortable, everyone. So just gently relax yourself in your chair. Maybe you're sitting on a bed. Maybe you're uh, driving in a car with your friends to a different state. And if that's the case, then the person driving, just keep your eyes on the road, obviously. And uh, basically just get yourself in a place where you can allow yourself to return to that stillness. Try not to be in a place where you're going to fidget. Try not to be moving your hands around. So just gently place your fi- your hands in your lap. And uh, Taylor and, and Nick, I'll, I'll just mute you guys for now, and I'll bring you back on once we're sort of uh, closing it off with the uh, Icaros. So I'll just mute you guys for now, and you guys can get into this uh, this meditation experience as well. So sound good? Let's yeah. do it. Okay, okay, let's do it. Okay, so again, guys, just get nice and comfortable. So just relax the shoulders. You can gently put your hands just on the tops of your thighs or just gently interlace your fingers into your lap. Even connect the pinky digit and the thumb digit so you can just get that sort of full connection between the digits and having your fingers interlaced, almost like the helix itself, the serpent. And just take that first breath, that first breath that is just going to bring us more into that calm state. Just gentle inhale through the nose. Gentle exhale through the nose. And just continue to find a rhythm with your breath. And with each breath, just bring yourself into a calmer place of more stillness. And at this point, just remember that the experiences that ayahuasca and DMT, what they provide is a natural experience that we are capable of of recreating with our own minds when we really get to those divine spaces within ourselves. So just let your imagination do its thing. Tell yourself, tell yourself, I am experiencing a fractal of the ayahuasca experience. I am allowing myself to experience what my mind is capable of sharing with me. And set no expectations, but maybe just imagine the visualization of that serpent, of the mother ayahuasca, of that helix moving up within us, even up our spine, up from our roots, moving its way up through our solar plex, past our heart, through our throats, through our brow, and right up into our crown. So allowing that full connection to take place. And as we do, it's opening up our antenna, opening up our etheric antenna to the other aspects of reality. Just take another breath, gently inhale, I'm just going to play the Icaros and just allow yourself to go where you need to go. Relax, enjoy, and listen. Kokamakura kainim, tribui tribui kanyarim, mai mantari ninim. Kokamakura kaini, tribui tribui kanyarim, mai mantari ninim. Kokamakura kainai ninim, kokamasamuri ninim, mantai kunainim, kayari ninim, kokamas ninim. Mantaini, 
with whatever experience came to you. Just take another breath. Just allow it to be able to remember it. Personally, with a meditation like that, it's very easy to connect with the gratitude of the serpent spirit itself. You can almost feel as if all of us right now at this moment are involved in a nice, warm, gentle, loving hug with the universe itself, with the reality that exists inside and outside of ourselves, spirit of the ayahuasca that is so innately within us. So when you're ready, gently begin to wiggle your fingers and wiggle your toes. And slowly open your eyes or keep them closed. It's up to you. And gently bring your awareness back to the room around you. All right, guys. So there we go. And uh, yeah, I'm interested to hear what that was like for, for our friends, Nick and Taylor. I'm sure uh sort of took them back to, to some of the experiences that, that they are, you know, they're so close to their heart at this point. So Nick Taylor, we're going to, we're going to bring you guys back onto the show to join us once again. And uh, there's eight minutes left in the show. So we're going to wrap things up. We're going to wrap up what has been an excellent episode so far. So here we go. Oh, that was amazing. <laughs> that, was so good. that was so good. I, I just, I have to get back into that jungle. Yes. <laughs> yes. Completely agree. Yeah, I have to get back into that jungle. Yeah, yeah. Now, was that, I mean, even just there, like, did either of you guys get, like, teary-eyed at all? I mean, <laughs> yeah. I started, yeah. I started to chip out a little bit, like, very mildly, obviously, but, like, uh, man. Uh, just, I'm happy, <laughs> man. Like, I'm happy. I'm happy for you. <laughs> Me too. Yeah, I find a lot of the times when I do uh, hear Icaros um, outside of ceremony, I can feel the medicine still mm-hmm. like in my yeah. body, you know, and, and I feel it working and doing its thing, and it just brings me right back to that jungle. Mm-hmm. It's amazing. Yeah. That was fantastic. Where did you get that um, skull? That I mean, for people who are looking uh, looking for Icaros music, I literally just typed a YouTube search on uh, I- Icaros ayahuasca. So Icaros is I C A R O S, and uh, that's the Nick. What did you say the word Icaros means again? Means song of power. Song of power. Very cool. So, mm-hmm. yeah, awesome. <laughs> All right, guys. Yeah, I'm I'm glad we got to share that. I wasn't exactly sure what to expect from that, but I mean, yeah, I think um, that was a very cool experience. So, and I and again for anybody for anybody who who maybe hasn't you know or, or just guys share in the chat what was that like for for you guys as well. And again, guys, if you're in the chat, be sure to connect with each other. So post the profiles to your own Facebook links and uh, add each other. If you post a link for your Facebook profile into the live chat, then presume that as an invitation for anybody in the live chat to to click on it, add it, and get connected and have a conversation on your own and just sort of see where things goes from there. So uh, we'll we'll bring on another caller onto the show who's been waiting patiently for for the last little while. I know they have something to share. And we only have less than five minutes left. So, caller, just sort of prepare yourself to sort of give us the cold notes on on what you'd like to share. And for anybody else who wants to continue the conversation, there will be an after party that we do through Google. And I'll post a link up for that. So, if you'd like to get involved with more of the conversation, be sure to check that out. And uh, again, go to facebook.com slash paradigm shift radio and you'll find the link for that. And uh, one final note, there will not be an episode for next week because I will be at the Lucidity Festival. So that's going to be my first weekend off doing the ra- not doing the radio show for the last 42 weeks. And uh, in the meantime, go back and check out any of the past episodes and you can find the archive links at paradigmshiftradio.com slash PSR. So uh, person calling in from area code 818 uh, Nicola, I believe it is. We're going to bring you onto the air. And again, with five minutes left, we'll just uh, get the last little bit of data out here on the internet. So, Nicola, are you with us? 
Uh, hello? Hello. All right. Man. We can hear you, man. Oh, for sure. Yeah, it's oh. Nikolai. But, Nikolai. Uh, okay, go ahead. Go ahead. What would you like to share? Oh, for sure. Hey, man. Uh, great job for organizing this and uh, great chant. I really enjoyed it. Awesome. And, Thank you. Uh, yeah, I was, um, right now, I, I, I just want to share, uh, right now I'm studying pharmacology right now and organic chemistry at Pasadena uh, College, right? Um, and, um, yeah, I, I just want to add that DMT actually is a four steps away from uh, tryptophan, uh, tryptophan, and it's really related to the tryptamine family. If you guys don't know what tryptamine is, is the it's a family of compounds. Uh, for example, m- melatonin is uh, yeah, it, it's a tryptamine, and um, it, it, it's it's really related to the DMT and the pineal gland. That's what I want to add. And uh, yeah, I mean, for people that uh, I, I just want to kind of spread awareness that. In, in general, in psychedelics, there are three main sort of groups of uh, psychedelics. There's uh, philethylamine, tryptamine, lysergamide. Those are like the three uh, biggest sort of main groups of uh, psychedelics. Uh, but, yeah, um, I, I, I just want to share my um, DMT experience with you guys and... Uh, I, I want to say that my far biggest DMT experience was um, when uh, I took uh, six hits at, out of um, a vaporizer. And, uh, yeah, that, that just uh, that just completely just uh, shattered my ego and uh, self being and. Uh, I um I just want to add that what I've learned from that experience is so powerful. I mean, it, I just I I just kind of learned that we are sort of uh, inside of us. We are we have an essence. It's sort of like a spirit, if you know what I mean. But it, it's not really a spirit in a way that it's it's more of an essence. That's what I believe. In. And um, I, I think it's, it, it has to do with the, the universe, too, that, for example, they're all sort of one. You know, we have in our DNA, we're sort of all related. Mm-hmm. And um, we, we have, you know, I remember uh, on that trip, I was just kind of getting away from just everything. It was sort of like I was zooming from, like, this universe, that like the, the the universe itself, and I remember thinking that we we are like I, I kind of convinced myself like am I dead? You know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. No, you're uh, you're quite alive. Yeah. Definitely. And uh, Nikolai, we we only have ninety seconds left here in the show, so I just like to be able to throw it over to our guests to close things off. And uh, thanks thanks for sharing that, dude. And and again, for anybody who has more to share, join us in the after party. And the after party link for that for the Google Hangout is up at the Facebook page, and I'll post in the live chat as well. So uh, to Nick first, and then Taylor with less than sixty seconds, just a final message to share with you that you would like to share here tonight. Yeah, ayahuasca is not a drug; it's a medicine. And go to the jungle and find out for yourself, preferably, or if you can get hold of some ayahuasca and access to a, a trusted or trustworthy shaman, try it and you will forever have your perception altered. Mm-hmm. And Taylor, 30 seconds. Um, I just want to say that if anybody's going to the Matt Psychedelic Science Conference <laughs> yeah. um, in, a, in, in about 10 days, uh, I will be there and come say hi because it would be really cool to meet oh. you. Cool. All right. Sounds good, guys. Again, connect with Taylor and Nick through Facebook. We'll post the links for them in the live chat, or sorry, into the YouTube episode, which you will be able to find and listen to the YouTube version. And uh, yeah, youtube.com slash bombshells. 
space friend and Nick's guys jujitsu brotherhood dot com and I'm Skull Babylon Facebook dot com slash Skull Babylon YouTube dot com slash Skull Babylon Paradigm Shift Central dot com Facebook dot com slash Paradigm Shift Radio and uh, we'll end it there guys thank you so much for being a part of the episode with us here tonight and uh, feel free to join us in the after party hangout if if you guys aren't in a rush by any means so thanks for having us Lee. thanks thank again so guys much. yeah thank All you right. let's guys. do let's, yeah. Let's do this again sometime. And thanks, Nikolai, as well. (laughs) Yeah, sure. All right, guys. So wrapping up the episode here. Until next time, we'll see you in the future. Namaste. Namaste.